You're watching the Wellness Hour news that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Evers. Today's topic, replacing missing teeth with dental implants. Hot topic. Um, and with us, we have an expert on the topic. He says nobody should be wearing a loose-fitting denture. With us, we have board-certified periodontist, Dr. Ryan Claggett. Dr. Claggett, welcome to the program. Thank you. So before we get into today's topic, I know you brought a lot of photos, so we'll get to those, but who's the typical dental implant patient that you see in your practice? It's people who either have a denture and they don't like it, or it's people that are headed to a denture that are thinking they're headed to a denture. So those people, you know, they feel hopeless and they, they want a better solution than, you know, the floating loose dentures that they either have or they're afraid that they're going to have. Is it true that in your practice, we talked on the phone, you say that people on the day of the procedure could come in with no teeth and walk out with brand new teeth that are fixed in that don't come out? Oh, absolutely. Is that right? Absolutely. It just takes a few hours. They come in, we do the procedure, and then they leave. They come home, they don't really remember anything from the procedure itself. We show them afterwards, they love it, but when they get home, they look in the mirror and they have a brand new smile. They don't remember anything because why? Because of the sedation? Yes. So we typically sedate everyone either by, you know, they take a pill, we do an IV, we do something to make them comfortable depending okay. on the situation. All right. And they, they go home, they wake up, brand new set of teeth. So this teeth in a day concept or getting teeth in the same day is true. I mean, that, that's possible. Not only is it possible, it's reality. You're doing it all the time? All the time. We have conversations every day. We do the surgery all the time and people get their teeth. It's great. So you don't like dentures? No. And after talking to, I don't know how many patients, no one likes dentures. People think it's their reality. In Kentucky, there's this mindset that, and it's an old school mindset, that you, you get your third set of teeth. So you have your baby teeth, you have your permanent teeth, you get those taken out, and then you get your next set, you get your plates. And that's what they call the dentures, plates? That's what a lot of my patients call the dentures. Okay. And we've been making these for people for years. My grandfather who became a dentist in 1947. He made a denture every night. He made a, two dentures a day. And he okay. did this for years and years and years. And so it used to be the rite of passage. But now we have something better. We can get people their fixed teeth back, which is amazing. Is that right? So, and we should mention, I mean, you come from a family of dentists. Uncle's a dentist, dad's a dentist, grandfather's a dentist. So you've been a dentist, what, in your head since you were like five years old? Probably before that. Okay, so you were always, I mean, you always knew you wanted to be a dentist? So I, I've been one, I've wanted to be a dentist for basically my entire life. That's just, this is what I grew up around. And so much that I became a dentist became a surgeon, but then now I work with my father okay. on a daily basis. It's amazing. And you were saying, because we talked on the phone, that you're able to help people now that your father just couldn't help in the old days. Especially your grandfather couldn't help. What oh, do you that's... mean by that? So, my grandfather, and thank you for letting me talk about my grandfather. He is my biggest hero, he's my mentor, and I actually got to treat him, okay. which was amazing. So, he told me one time that his greatest regret in his entire dental practice was that he was taking people's teeth out when he was when they were really young and then over the years those people started to live longer and longer and longer and by the end of his practice he was seeing people they had no bone they couldn't eat they couldn't chew their teeth floated around and really a lot of them owned the denture but they didn't even wear it okay they had teeth in a jar and no one wants teeth in a jar so now by you know, working with specialized implants, doing bone grafting, doing whatever we need to do, pretty much everybody is a candidate to have something better than a removable denture that floats around in their mouth. How old can you be to get dental implants? The oldest patient that I ever treated was my grandfather. He has three implants. How old? He, he was 91. Why would he want to do that at 91? Well, Randy, he's healthy. So he wanted to be able to eat and chew just like everyone else. Okay, fair. Let me tell you another story. All right. I had a patient, she's 89 years old. Okay. So not quite as old as my grandfather. She was the oldest person that I placed an implant on until him. So she had her three front teeth, these three teeth right here. She had them taken out. I don't know why, but her dentist made a value judgment for her and they gave her a flipper, which is, if it's possible to be worse than a denture, it's a flipper. That's like teeth that just- That's like- Flap. Flip. Like plastic teeth that like 
flip or flap inside your mouth and they just kind of stick on. Okay. And you made that value judgment because she was 89 and why would she want to do anything better? So then she came and found us. We gave her three brand new teeth supported by implants. Okay. But before we did that, I asked her, like, you know, what's your motivation? I was just curious. And she said, I don't care if I die tomorrow. She's 89 years old. She was 89 okay. at the time. I don't care if I die tomorrow, I want teeth. So we gave her some teeth and she was thrilled because she didn't have to have the removable plastic teeth in and out when she went to restaurants, when she went out with her friends. She didn't have to worry about taking her teeth out and getting food caught underneath them and rinsing her dentures out and all this other stuff. She just had teeth just like everybody else. And she was whole again. Now, uh, you brought photos, because you say this is like life-changing. You give somebody their teeth back, it's like a big, big deal. It's a huge deal. So let me show you a couple okay, of things. Okay, all right, let's take a look. Okay, so take a look at this woman. All right. She's our typical dental implant patient, and she's a patient that we love to see in our practice. So she's got a smile that she doesn't like, but let's take a closer look. All right. So, wow. here we go. Yeah, so she has She's had a lot of dental work, but she's got infections, she has broken teeth, and more importantly, she doesn't have any back teeth. So she doesn't like her smile. She was depressed, she didn't smile. She told you this on the consult? Absolutely. Okay. And when I talked to her, she just looked grumpy all the time. All right. And I really didn't think she was very happy, and it turns out she wasn't. But here's the kicker. She was afraid of dying. She wasn't afraid of dying because of the way that her teeth were. She was afraid of dying because she doesn't have any back teeth. If you look in this picture, she doesn't have But why have would that any... make her die? Because she can't chew her food. Okay. So she actually had the Heimlich maneuver performed on her three times. She came okay, well, to us. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, she came to us because she was afraid of dying because she didn't have any back she teeth. She was choking on her food. She almost choked to death. Okay, interesting. She's got a bad gag reflex. Well, she thought that she was headed for a denture that she knew she couldn't wear. And she had pretty much given up all hope. So she came in and found us. All right. So here's the cool thing. In one day, we were able to take her from these teeth and we were able to give her this smile. Wow. It's amazing. So what do you do? You, you extract those teeth, so clean we, up the gums, and give her the new set of teeth. So we removed her teeth, we cleaned up the gums, we placed several dental implants, and then we, we fixed her denture teeth, and I hate even to say dentures because dentures remind me of the well, floating teeth, but we gave her a new set of teeth, we screwed them in place, and they were fixed the day she left. So she had brand new teeth from day one. So I told her I was doing this interview, and I asked her if she would send me a selfie shot. Okay. And so she sent me this shot, and several others, because now she is a photo-taking machine. <laughs> okay. She loves her smile. All right. And it shows in her face. But then I asked her to do something for me. I asked her to take a picture of her not smiling. Okay. So this is a picture. Now you'll notice it's the exact same outfit. It is the exact same thing. One picture was taken right after another. And the only thing that I asked her to do, because I wanted to see what the difference in her overall you know, face and her overall appearance was, yeah. if she smiled or if she didn't. And when you look at those two pictures, the one thing that stands out to me in, in her face and countless other people's, is that when you don't smile, your eyes don't light up, your eyebrows don't yeah, good come up, point, your good cheekbones point. don't go. It literally looks like you're mad. So if you can smile, I mean, she's showing that to everybody. She's showing it to everyone She in looks town. more attractive. I mean, it definitely, because you know, we talked and I always say, well, it's just teeth. And you said, no, Randy, it's much more than teeth. Let me show you these photos. But yeah, I mean, she looks better, a lot better. She's yeah. gotta be, I mean, when they see their face for the first time, what do they say to you? Especially her. So. When we show them their face for the first time, they're usually right out of the treatment. Okay. And we get inconsistent answers. Because we, what, they're on a sedation? Because they bit. just got sedated. Okay. But we call them the next day. And to a person, every single one is like, wow, <laughs> my teeth look amazing. They haven't had teeth like that in forever. So if you look back at, at her smiling picture, these aren't denture teeth. Yeah. These aren't like the chiclet teeth, square teeth, fake looking teeth. These are, th these are custom done. And we take a lot of time before the patient comes in, but- Yeah, because they look like natural teeth. Absolutely. So we take that time, but the patient's not here while we do it. We digitally design everything and we make them the perfect smile 
from the get-go. So they get a smile that's custom designed for them before they ever come in. And then all we have to do is do the work and they get a great smile. So this, so this woman, and you said with like literally, I mean, if everything goes perfectly, like two appointments and they could have their new teeth. Somebody with no teeth or even somebody that you had to do extractions and give them new teeth supported by implants, like two or three appointments. So the way that it Is works, that right? yeah. So you come in and we take a look and we go over some options and then you decide what options you want. And then the next time you come in, we take some scans and we gotta take 3D x-rays, we gotta see the bones, we gotta do all that stuff. Yeah. And then we take some digital scans so that we can design everything. And then we do all that work, you come in for your appointment and we do the work for you and you leave with teeth. So it's like two to three visits tops and you have teeth. So when it's all done and they're healed up, how soon can they eat? Immediately. Okay. They can eat salads, broccoli, raw vegetables. Do steak. they give you eating stories? Do they tell you, doc, can I eat this? Can I eat that? So everybody asks if they can eat steak and corn on the cob. In okay. Kentucky, those evidently must be the, big, right. the biggest things to eat. And they tell me after it's done, they can eat those things. They could, so they could bite something with the front of their teeth. With it, so it's not a problem. No. Okay. And in fact, it's so much different than somebody who wears dentures. The people that wear dentures, if they've worn them long enough, they've forgotten. They've long forgotten what it's like to eat those foods. Their new reality, once you have floating dentures, is... Soft foods, casseroles, mashed potatoes. Nobody thinks about steak, vegetables, fibrous foods, salads, anything like that. And that's a real health problem because if you can't eat those foods, all those carbohydrate laden things leads to diabetes, leads to all kinds of health problems. And over the years, the least healthy people that I see are people that have poor fitting dentures because they can't eat the foods that we need. So they can't to like be even bite into a sandwich you were saying and tug it out of their mouth. Someone that's wearing a removable dentures that's not supported by implants, it is very, very rare for them to be able to eat anything like that without dislodging their so dentures. So pain, you say it's not something they really complain about. Typically not. I mean, most patients, you know, we call everyone the next day, the day after we do things, and then we see them a few times to make sure and we check on people. And it is, it's, it's like non-narcotic pain medicine. It's easy. So you see transformations all the time. You give them their teeth back and they change. Instantly. I love how you snapped your finger because okay. that's how fast it happens. So take the, the young lady we were talking about earlier. And she's a young lady. She had, you know. And that's too young to be wearing dentures for sure. Oh my goodness. And she's not much older than me. And she has her whole life, you know, 50, 60 years ahead of her. And she, we can take her from diseased, infected, hurting teeth that she's embarrassed about to an awesome smile in a few hours. Now back to the top of the show, you said that there's probably more than 500,000 people in Kentucky have an upper lower denture or plate. If dental implants are so good where they could get a brand new set of teeth, why aren't they all doing it? What's your take? My take is that people who have dentures or they're heading to a denture, they don't go to the dentist. In fact, the last place they want to go is to a dentist. Because let me tell you about their life. Before it, they ended up in their denture. Either before they ended up in a denture or their current life right now as they're getting ready to go to that denture. Okay. Their life is like this. I call it the churn. And what I mean by that, and I've talked to who knows how many patients, and it's every single person. It's like I'm a mind reader because I tell them exactly their story. <laughs> okay. It's crazy. The churn. The churn. Okay. And the churn is this. Tooth hurts. You go get it fixed. You spend some money. That fails. You go back, you get your tooth taken out. Then you spend more money and you do it again and again and again and again until either you have no teeth left or you have about half your teeth and your teeth are infected and they hurt, but you've lost all confidence in dentistry because you have this removable plastic thing in your mouth that you don't like, or you have half your teeth and you can't eat. So why would they want to come see me? So it's hard to get them in. It's very hard to get them in. And they don't go to dentists for the dentist to say, hey, there's this great surgeon that can help you out. They don't ever make it to them. So with Google and online and Facebook and all this other stuff, now they're starting to come in because people are that getting That means they're going educated. directly to the guy that does the dental implants. They come directly to me. Okay. Most of the patients that I see in these situations, they don't have a dentist. We are their dentist. And that's why what we've got going on at our office is great because we have surgeon specialist and we have dentist specialists. So under one can, roof? Under one roof. Okay. 
So we can help everyone. So let me show you this other patient. All right. Okay. And I told him that I was going to share the, his story on this program. Okay. So he has given me full consent because this is a pretty emotional story. And, and I, I'm really proud to okay. have helped him. So let me give you some backstory. So this is Angel. All right. Oh my so goodness. This is. There's Angel. This has got to be unusual. No, that Randy. Looks pretty bad. It's not unusual, but you never see these folks. They don't smile. They think, okay. so they don't realize how common it is. Do they say that to you too? Like, doc, this is the worst you've ever seen? Every day. Okay. Every day. They say, this is the worst case you've ever seen. And it's never the worst case I've ever seen. But at our office, we don't shame or blame anyone. We just want to help them out. All right. So Angel's a happy guy. Or he wants to be happy. But look at his smile. So that's it. That's okay. a forced smile. That's his reality. But let me give you some backstory on Angel, because this is a really important story. So Angel is an army veteran. So he was over in the Middle East and Af um, in Afghanistan. He got hit by a car bomb. And luckily, he didn't die. But he got blown into a building, traumatic brain injury, and he broke his back. So he is on chronic pain medicine, hospital visit after hospital visit after hospital visit, and his teeth were just destroyed. Okay. A lot because not great access to care and all the medicines that he takes. It's a really difficult case. And he actually came in to see the dentist that I work with. Okay. And he thought dentures are his reality, but he's a young guy. And so we talked to him a bit, and before all this injury, he was, you know, the class clown. He was a cut up. He was so fun and fun loving. But now, I'll be honest, the first time that I made Angel, I didn't think he was like happy at all. And it turns out he wasn't. He was depressed. He was having family problems. And this was his reality. So on the lower, we gave him a beautiful new set of teeth anchored by dental implants. Okay. And the upper, we gave him a great cosmetic set of teeth. All right. So now I want you to Let's see take this. a look. Okay. So here is a before smile. And that's the biggest smile that I could get out of him. Now, I said that he was depressed. He wasn't a happy guy. So I want to show you a couple of pictures. And these are ones, he sent these to me just yesterday. Okay, good, good. And his wife sent them to me, actually. So there is a picture of Angel and Megan. Nice. And look at that smile. I mean, it's a million dollar smile. And he's happy. Okay. He can eat. He had forgotten what it was like to eat. And when he came in, his mouth hurt so bad. All those broken down, decayed teeth, massive infection, tons and tons of bacteria. I mean, he wasn't healthy. And it hurt. Now he doesn't hurt, and he can eat his food. So this is the one that I'm most proud of. Okay. Look at this with his kids. Now, he told me, the last time I saw him, and it was just a Good couple story. of weeks ago, he said, my girls are now saying, Daddy got his teeth back. Daddy can smile. Daddy's happy again. And this story is like so many others. So when you don't wear, when you don't wear your denture, or when you have teeth that you're not proud of, you don't smile. And so if you're around your kids, if you're around your grandkids, when something good happens, you don't smile. Everyone thinks you're mad. And I have tons of patients. Their kids are getting married. They've got a you know, family reunion. I had a patient, 50 year high school reunion, came in, got a brand new set of teeth because he wanted to see his high school girlfriend of 50 years ago because they were both <laughs> single. Okay. I think it turned out pretty well, but it was all because it was because of the teeth, but it was more than that. It was because he had the confidence to talk to people, to eat, and to smile, and to laugh, and to be himself. It really shows the inner person on the outside. And if you can't show the outside, then the inner person becomes that depressed, homebound, grumpy, non-smiling person that we see every day. And we just Are think there that many people that hate their teeth? Because I mean, you hear the stories. I mean, are there really? Because I, I don't hear it, obviously. Well, it, the reason you don't hear it is because they're not talking about it. You, you would never know. But just imagine that the person that you see that doesn't smile, shows no emotion whatsoever. Now, it might be because that's just the way that they are. But, but usually a lot of times, the teeth. it's their teeth. Can you spot it as a dentist? Like around town, you go, I bet they're hiding something. I can. Because if you catch somebody in a moment of honesty, they'll smile. And then the moment that they smile, 
They're going to close their mouth. And look what I do with my eyes. They close their mouth or they'll put their hand in front of their mouth. So if you see anybody that's doing this, that's a dead giveaway that they're not happy about their teeth. So are you ever too far gone? Like, like what about people with really bad gums? You're a periodontist, they have gum disease. Are their gums too bad to support implants? No, no, in fact, I'm the perfect person to come to for that. As a periodontist, that's what I do. So we can clean their gums up, and if they have to lose all their teeth, well, then we clean their gums up and then we can do dental implants because all the infections are around their teeth. So you get the teeth out of the way and they become like everybody else. Okay. And some people don't even need to lose all their teeth. You know, it just depends. So first thing we- I mean, to... some people come in thinking they need to lose all their teeth and you could save teeth. Does that ever happen? Oh yeah. So it happened even this week. All right. So lady comes in, she thinks, you know, I'm the worst person that you've ever seen, got the worst teeth ever. She was sure she needed a denture, but she was scared. She was scared just to come in the office. So she thought she was the worst person ever because she had front teeth that didn't match and she had a brown front tooth. Okay. And she never smiled. Now her son's getting married in three months and she came to me because she wanted a smile for her son's wedding. Okay. So she thought she was gonna have to take out all her teeth. Of course not. We can do cosmetic dental work. She was missing a couple of teeth in the back. We can do a couple of dental implants there and she's fine. We cleaned her teeth and she's gonna get that smile, that million dollar Hollywood smile that she's always dreamed of, less than three months, and she didn't have to go through the denture process. The denture process is easy, but if we don't have to do it, of course we're not gonna take your teeth out. So is that one of the advantages by going to a periodontist? Because you guys are like the specialists in saving teeth? We're the specialists in saving teeth, okay. and we're the specialists in replacing them if we can't save them. So we can figure it all out, give you your options, okay. and then go from there. Now we're short on time, but the two groups of patients, they're currently wearing a denture or the other group that they're headed to dentures. When they go to your practice, what are their options when it comes to dental implants? So you can get two implants just in the lower and that lower denture snaps in and then you get an upper denture. Okay. And, and that's good. That is way better than a traditional denture that flips and flops around. No one can wear. So just a, snaps in, snaps out. Right. Nobody can okay. wear a flip in or a lower denture so it snaps in. But there's maintenance with that. And it moves a little bit. You can get food underneath it, but it is so much better than a regular denture. Okay. So then the next evolution of that is it's more implants, but it snaps. And it's there, but you do have to take it in and out every night, and there's more maintenance with it. Now, the last option is the option that everyone wants. It's just fixed teeth. It's like you get your new teeth back. You don't have to think about it. There's no maintenance. It's easy. So. The upper is the best part because the upper denture, everybody gets it, they gag, it moves around, they have to use all that stick em glue. With fixed teeth, you don't have to do any of that. We actually take the palate out. So you taste your food, you don't gag, there's no glue. You can eat whatever you want. You can eat anything you want. You could be 80, 90, it doesn't matter the it, age. It doesn't matter the age. Now, you're a dentist you think the smile is important. Probably the most important thing. How important is the smile? We'll close with that. So I've been doing a lot of thinking about the smile and my answer is the smile's everything. Okay. But let me explain that. The smile's everything because the smile is the most important part of your face. All the studies show that either one, two, three of something that somebody notices about your face is your smile. And okay. the smile is what allows the inner you to show to the outside world. As we talked about earlier, when you smile, your eyes light up, your cheekbones race, okay. and you're just generally happy. But let's take it a step further. If you, what happens if you don't smile? Now Hollywood shows us this, it's the best example. Now, if you're a villain in Hollywood, you've got stained teeth, you've got crooked teeth. If you're in the cartoons and they wanna make you look poor or stupid, they take a front tooth out. They yeah, make your, that's they a make good your point. teeth look bad. But now, have you ever seen Prince Charming with anything but a million dollar smile? In fact, That's true. most of the time, if they want to show somebody off in a cartoon, they smile and that little star comes off their canine tooth yeah. because they want to highlight that awesome smile. In a job interview, take somebody who doesn't smile and you take somebody who does. Who are you going to hire? Like we said, we, we talked about this, like two twin sisters. 
One's yeah. smiling, one isn't. You hire the one that looks happy, I guess. Absolutely. Or mm. self-confident or whatever. Let me tell you a story. So I met somebody not too long ago and I asked him what the value of their smile was. And she was in the office and we were talking about their smile. And she gave me an answer that I didn't even, it, it didn't even dawn on me that she would. She said, the smile is everything. And I thought, that's weird because that's what I say. <laughs> okay. She said, when she was growing up, she didn't have a lot of money and her teeth were really stained and she was so self-conscious. So then her parents scraped up enough money to put braces on. Now, most people, when they get the braces on and all the metal in their mouth, that's the worst day. She said, that was the best day of her life. It covered up the stain. Okay. Then she got rubber bands and her teeth were all kinds of different colors. That was an even better day because it covered up her teeth. The worst day of her life was when she got her braces off. And that's so different than when I got my braces off and I'm sure when you got your braces yeah. off as a kid. So she's been going around with stained teeth and she's had some patchwork done. And so we're gonna give her that million dollar Hollywood smile that she's always wanted and she is so excited and I'm excited for her. That smile's everything. Especially if it bothers you. Like you said, we've talked off camera where, look, this is not for everybody, but if you don't like your teeth, do something about it. If you don't like your denture, for sure, do something about it. Yeah, everybody has something they don't like about themselves. This just happens to be something that we can easily fix and it's for everyone. Now we have to mention though, insurance doesn't cover this. Medic even the best dental insurance doesn't cover all of it. Medicare, Medicaid for sure doesn't cover it. So what's the answer? Well, the answer is we finance it. Okay. Now we have folks that are dedicated to get every last dollar out of the insurance companies. Okay. So we'll maximize that, but then you can make payments. So, so you're not carrying it. I mean, these are lenders. You have to have decent credit to get the financing. Is that correct? No, we carry it ourselves. Okay. We self-finance. So you trust us to do the work and we trust you to pay for it. We nice. meet you. We treat you like family. So that's it. So they make a down payment, especially if they have credit problems or something, they make a substantial down payment and then we work with them on monthly payments. Okay. Or we work, in some cases, we work with a third party lender or something, whatever makes so the most sense. So with decent credit, you can do it with no money down and finance it, obviously. Yeah, we work with you. We figure out what your situation is and we go from there. We just wanna help you out. And pain is not something that people complain about and it's not something that should keep you from doing this. Okay, good. So if they saw you on, the pro, if they saw you on this interview uh -huh. and they bring that up, you said you're gonna offer a free consultation. Absolutely. Where they can meet with you, get an evaluation mm -hmm. and you'll give them a treatment plan that day in writing. Is yes. that right? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. I wanna thank you for coming to the show. Good stuff. Thank you. No more dentures. No more dentures. All right. You're watching the Wellness Hour, news that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. For now, I wish you good health. Thanks for watching the Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.